So today we're going to do a little bit of armor stress testing. AR500 was nice enough to send us two of their level 3 curved armor plates and we're going to test these against some common rifle calibers up to some magnum style rifle calibers that really aren't rated for level 3 but what the heck. We're going to shoot at about 35 yards. Some of our uh, testing will include 223, 308, 30 out 6, 300 wind mag, and 338 Remington Ultra mag. As a general noting, the NIJ level 3 threat will stop multiple, tar multiple hits of 308 and other calibers up to around 2800 feet per second. Any exotic ammo like your 30 out 6 AP is not designed for level 3. So our first load that we have is a 55 grain soft point, 223.556, 16 inch barrel. Again we're at about 35 yards. Now we have M193 556 by IMI. Our two right hand shots here are the uh, 55 grain soft points, and these two are the M193. This coating, as you can see, is really thick, it's probably almost like a quarter of an inch thick got pretty warm right there. We don't see a pass through. We'll uh, cut this off and see if we can cut these out of here. But here's some fragmentation from the round blowing apart. We put clay as a backer on these because I saw some interest in people curious about blunt force trauma behind a rifle plate and the clay face after those four rounds is, is untouched. Next we have some M855 by Lake City. Same 16 inch AR versus our AR 500. So our 855, we hit it right around this area. We got some smoke coming out here. We'll have to hit the GoPro film and see what we got on that. We now have some uh, custom 5.56 loads using SS190 from 5.7. These are right around 3,400 feet per second. We're going to test these against the plate. I have a feeling from prior tests that these won't go through, but just as a precaution, level 3 is not rated to stop higher velocity rounds such as these. So those custom 556 loads, same as the other stuff, it just pretty much messed up the coating and there's no pass through whatsoever. Here we have some standard M80 ball 308 or M1A. So here are our 308 M80 rounds. We hit one right here, blew the label off, and one right here. No pass through. Got a little bit of a dimple there. What's interesting, now on the clay, we do have a little bit of a blunt force trauma going on there. You've got imprint there. So if you get hit with 308 on one of these plates, you're definitely going to feel it. Here we have some standard M2 ball, 30-06, to our M1 Grand. So our M2 ball, just put 
put some dimples in there. There's a there's some little cratering going on there, but the back side of this is still starting to get a little misshapen. But still in one piece. Time to step up to the big boys. The, the uh, blunt force trauma obviously is starting to increase. This piece of clay that was once square is now starting to contour to the back of this plate the more that we hit it with the higher power round. So let's we'll see what we get here in a minute. Next we have some 180 grain soft point 300 wind mag. As a note, this is very close to approaching the speed limit for this plate, but we're going to test it anyways to see if we can punch through it. We have a pass through now, a 300 wind mag. Again, this plate isn't rated for that. So our 300 wind mag punched through our plate. You have the tiny little holes. But on the back side here, you've got the big holes here. And it punched a big hole through the clay. Most of the bullet fragments are actually inside the clay. What created the wound channel was this piece of the actual plate that the bullet dislodged that we found in the second milk jug. We found some more fragments on top of the clay that still looked like part of the plate. So uh, let's see what 300 uh, or 338 Remington Ultra Mag does to this. So our 300 wind mag went through it. So now we're going to try some 338 rum. We have a uh, 250 grain boat tail solid on top and a 225 grain on the bottom. So our 338, that 250 grain bolt tail, that 250 grain bolt tail solid did not go through. It must be some not very hard brass. You've got some fragments everywhere. Here is the entrance. Now that second 225 grain was here, and it went through. So we found the bullet in the second. Here's our final test against our AR500 level three plate. This is 30-06. M2 AP with the hardened steel penetrator or M1 Grand. Here's our entrance. That is a perfectly clean cut hole right in that steel. There's the exit. Here are some of our wound channel through the clay here. Just a nice big open hole. It went into all three milk jugs behind it. 
and we actually captured the steel penetrator that's inside the 30-06 M2AP round. And that thing is, the tip is a little bit bent, but it's still in pretty good shape. This stuff is a real deal. So we brought our plate home that we shot earlier with a lot of cutting and pulling we're able to remove most of the uh, plastic coating the stuff's almost or this stuff's over a quarter of an inch thick and as you can see from a lot of the video it does a really good job of capturing fragments I mean we've got a lot of fragments that I've pulled out here after pulling the coating off there's some of the five seven round fragments there that were just caught underneath there so that does a really good job of keeping fragments from ricocheting. In here were like our 30-06 rounds. Our 308 was right here. This hole right here was our 338 rum. These two holes right here were our 300 wind mag. That again was our 30-06 M2AP. You can see that just perfect hole there. There was our 5.7 load there, just a very tiny dimple there, but no pass through. On the back side, the coating is a little thinner, obviously because it's against your body and you don't need such a thick coating. As you can see, the 300 wind mag just pretty much broke the steel off there. Again, there's our here's our back side of our 30 out 6 AP. Here again was our recovered steel core penetrator from the 30-06. This shot it with a uh, material gun at work. It's 98.18% iron, 1% manganese, and 0.276% uh, chromium. It labeled it as a uh, 12L14 or tool steel S5 types hardened steel so these are the uh, these are what level 4 plates are designed to stop overall this plate did everything it said it would do it's NIJ level 3 certified and stopped 308 and 30-06 rounds up to around 2800 feet per second and all lesser threats were easily stopped one of these plates weighs about 11 pounds when it's whole. If you're in the market for any type of uh, body armor, especially hard plates, for the price that they charge for these, they're really hard to beat and they're top quality. They also have a whole other arrangement of steel targets and they even carry soft body armor as well. I'll uh, throw their link in the description below. Thanks for watching everyone.